Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another encouragement from the Psalms. And today's Psalm is Psalm 21. Uh, so we'll have a go at seeing what God has been saying to me, and then I encourage you to read it yourself and see uh, what he highlights for you in the passage. But let's just pray before we begin. Lord, in Psalm 19, we, uh, we heard the psalmist finished with, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So Lord, we pray the same, that the words of my mouth now and our combined meditations uh, would be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, folks, uh, the psalm begins, O Lord, in your strength, the king rejoices, and in your salvation, how greatly he exults. I just love that as a beginning. In your strength, the king rejoices. David is a man after God's own heart. He's a king after God's own heart, and he knows how to rejoice. You know, in, in the New Testament, I think it's in Second Peter, it sort of defines the Christian life, the, the Christian life as joy inexpressible and filled with glory. Well, well, David knows what joy inexpressible means. In your strength, the king rejoices, and in your salvation, how greatly he exults. Now, salvation, uh, spoken of here in Psalm 21, um, doesn't necessarily mean like personal salvation as we would understand it in uh, the 21st century. Uh, it's not about praying the prayer kind of thing necessarily, but it's speaking of like the salvation, like God's complete deliverance God's complete um, faithfulness like his salvation to David he, David has just obviously won a battle uh, after that he's writing this psalm after and he's thanking God for that deliverance and in your deliverance how greatly the king exalts exalts to sing to celebrate to enjoy that's what David's doing he, here's another question how good are you at exulting uh, C.H. Spurgeon, who's fast becoming my favourite author, I think, at the moment, favourite preacher, uh, he, he says, half-hearted hymns are an insult to heaven. Half-hearted hymns are an insult to heaven. Do we know how to exult, how, how to just get excited about the salvation of God? Do we know how to party in his presence? I, I think there's so much in this psalm um, that's kind of like a roadmap for life. Uh, a roadmap for how to look at life and how to think about life and how to uh, face the challenges and joys of life um, uh, and it's it's going to be a simple devotion today folks but I hope it's a I hope it's profoundly helpful to you and um, I, I see three things in this roadmap I see that it's good to look back it's good to look forward and it's good to think about the moment okay it's good to, to look back, it's good to look forward, but it's also good to 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 be in the moment. Um, the first thing is it's good to look back. You know, it says it in verse two, you have given him his heart's desire and have not withheld the request of his lips. David is thanking God for something here. He's saying, you've given me my heart's desire. You've not held back what I've asked for. You've given me my heart's desire. You've answered my prayer. And that it's particularly interesting when you think about it in the light of uh, the, the psalm that Carlton showed us yesterday, Psalm 20, uh, where in verse 4 it says, May he grant you the, your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation in the name of our God. Set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. So he's, he's prayed before the battle. God, give me my heart's desire and hear my petitions. And after the battle, he says, you've given me my heart's desire and you've not withheld the request of my lips. So it's like we have Psalm 20, the prayer before the, the battle, and Psalm 21, the praise after it. And what I love is that David knows how to, to thank God for answered prayers. There's even a word just after this, Selah, that's a stage direction for people singing this song. And it just means pause and reflect. To pause and reflect. Do we pause and reflect long enough 
to think about how God has answered our prayers, where, he, where he's, he's granted us our heart's desire and has not withheld the request of our lips. Do we pr- pause long enough to thank him? Uh, we probably uh, know what it is to not have a prayer answered. We probably focus on that. But I want to encourage you, focus on the prayers answered. Like I, was, I was just thinking, my default is to, to basically put things down to, oh, that's good, or, or that's a coincidence, or something like that. For, you know, for example, it's not long ago that I was crying out to God to, to heal Boris Johnson. And I thought, like, I mean, imagine the, 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 the victory the enemy would get if anything happened to Boris Johnson. Imagine the fear that would put into people if anything happened to Boris Johnson. And we prayed, and I'm sure everybody listened to this, prayed for Boris Johnson. And then he was okay. And he came out and he gave his thanks to the NHS workers. It was a great moment and all the rest of it. But did you actually take a time to stop and reflect and just go, God, thank you, thank you, thank you for granting me the desires of my heart there and, and, and healing that man. And thank you for not withholding the request of my lips. Folks, this is what it is to be a believer. We, we get the privilege of prayer. I think it's Pascal who said that he, you know, he has entrusted to his creatures the dignity of causality. So we get to believe get to know that our prayers make a difference they bring about change and let's let's when we see prayers answered let's pause let's see that let's just reflect on what god has done it's just incredible and david looks back and he looks back at all the things god has done this is this is such an important part of the christian life he looks back he looks back at how God met him with rich blessings, how God crowned him, how God protected him and gave him life, how God's keeping his kingdom going on forever. Um, He thanks God for for his salvation and the majesty that is bestowed on him and and all these sorts of things. He, He knows how to look back. Folks, can I encourage you? We need to be people who look back and see what God has done. And not just only look back in our own lives, but look back in what God has done in our world and to his people. Like, remember, like, we're, we're not Israelites, okay? But we have been grafted into this family. So the, the history of this people that we read about in this book, the history of this people becomes part of our history now. Like, this is our history. Like, our forefathers spiritually, walked through the Red Sea. Our forefathers spiritually received bread from heaven. And we look back in praise, knowing that that actually gives us fuel for the fire to believe that God can do it tomorrow. If he did it yesterday, he can do it tomorrow. A testimony opens up the possibility that God can do it again. You see, this is the way it must be. And folks, here's another thing I would say to you. I am, I am Church of Ireland, okay? Um, but you know what? I, I'm not going to be tribal. You know, I'm not going to be tribal in terms of I only want to, I only care what God's doing in my little tribe. Like, what, what's he doing in the Church of Ireland? No, what God's doing in the Methodist Church and the Presbyterian Church and the New Church world and, and whatever church, you know, I, I feast on that fuel knowing that if God can do that he can do it again and he can do it in my life and in my day Uh, you know I hold on to that let's not be tribal let's let's really trust God see what he's doing and trust God for and that he'll do it again or even do greater things in the next season I want to encourage you folks allow what God has done in the past to fuel what you can believe for in the future. Really want to encourage you. And then in the middle of this psalm, David says, having looked back, he says, for the king trusts in the Lord. Uh, and through the steadfast love of the, might, the Most High, he shall not be moved. So, so seeing what God has done and taking note of what God has done enables us to go, we shall not be moved. God is powerful and faithful 
and he's done it in the past and he will do it again. I will not be moved. So look back. But also, folks, uh, we must learn to look forward with faith. Knowing that he's done it before, look forward with faith, knowing that he can do it again. Uh, and David then goes through verses 8 down to about uh, verse 12 there. He knows he's won a battle, but he knows he's going to have battles to face in the future. But he is fully faithful, filled with faith that God can do it again. He trusts him completely to do it again. Folks, let me encourage you. God can do it again. You don't need to be afraid. He's done it in the past. He can do it again. The grace that has taken us safe thus far, we're looking back, is the grace that will lead us on. You know, I love uh, a song by Matt Redman called Never Once Have I Ever Walked Alone. It's, it's almost like that footprint poem in a song, but have a listen to it on YouTube. Never once have I ever walked alone. Never once did you leave me on my own. You are faithful. God, you are faithful. You know, it talks then about breathing in his grace and breathing out his praise. It talks about standing on a mountaintop, looking back at what God has done, knowing that he was always with me. He was always with me. And that, that, that breathing in of his grace in the past enables us to praise him, knowing that he will do it in the future. So looking back is so important. Looking forward in faith is so important but let me just say one more thing it's also really important that we live in the moment okay we live in the moment you know our god is the god of our forefathers backwards and and he's the god who at the end of revelation will make all things new and we see that you know he's the god of yesterday and he's the god of tomorrow but here's an important thing he's also the god of today he is the I am. He is the God of today. We know Brother Lawrence, uh, who, who that uh, that that uh, monk in in the monastery who dedicated his life to just meeting with God in every moment. That book that's written about him practicing the presence of God. And then there, there's been extensions to his work, uh, like there's that guy Frank Lobach, who. Um, talked about the sacrament of the moment connecting with God in every moment that we're we're like uh, branches connected to a vine you know we need to be feeding on him now and that's what I want to encourage you to do folks so much of our prayer lives are are looking back at what God uh, has done or looking back at what we have done or whatever you know in maybe repentance for example and then we're full of good intentions about what we're going to do next. We're going to read the whole Bible in the next year or we're going to break some sort of pattern of addiction or we're going to do whatever. We're looking forward. But here's the important thing, folks. The only moment we have to offer God is the moment we are in. You know, even in this lockdown time, you know, we look back and we say, oh, it was so great to go to church. It was so great to, to do that. It was so great to do the other. It was so good to go for coffees with friends. And it was so good to go to concerts. And it was so good to go on holidays and whatever, looking back. And then we start to dream about what we're going to do when it's all over. You know, we're going to do, we're going to be back to church and we're going to uh, go to Spain or we're going to go to the North Coast or we're going to, out for dinner or whatever whatever your thing is that you're gonna do as soon as lockdown's lifted but folks here's the reality this moment you're in now is a moment of opportunity this moment and what will you do with this moment of opportunity we look back it's so good to look back and see god's faithfulness it's so good to look forward and trust him for the future but in this moment what do we read verse 13 David says, be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your power. Be lifted up now, God. Be lifted up now. I'm going to lift you up now, Lord, in your strength. And we will sing and praise your power. Because can I encourage you? Worship God now. Like right now. Like right now. Just switch this video off. Uh, get out of Facebook and just worship him now for who he is, 
for what he has done and will do, but who he is as well to you now. And what would be your response right now to his incredible faithfulness in the past and his steadfast love that you can be sure of in the future? What's your response now? Because he's here now. He's there now. He's with you now. Worship him is my encouragement to you.